welcome to our online service for today, which is the seventh Sunday after Trinity. Uh, hopefully tomorrow we'll be, be able to unlock and we'll be able to sing in church from next Sunday. And as I thought about that, if you're watching this, the online version of our service, um, we can meet in church now in person. We live stream the majority of our services now. You can watch them there. But if you'd like to carry on watching these services, these online versions, um, do you please let us know if you just drop any of the leadership team an email. Um, all our email addresses are on the front of our notice sheet, which are distributed. Failing that, you can find it on our website. And we'd really like to know. It's obviously an awful lot of effort goes into it. And if, you know, if there's nobody really wants to watch it, then we can still we we'll still be putting up our live stream, but we'd be very interested in your views. So thank you. So let's prepare ourselves for today's service. So a couple of lines from Psalm 67. So God be gracious to us and bless us and make his face to shine upon us that your way may be known upon earth, your saving power among all nations. So grace, mercy and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you and also with you. This is the day that the Lord has made, so let us rejoice and be glad in it.
So we come now to, for a time where we can say sorry to God. It's that precious time we put ourselves right with him. So in a few moments of silence, let's just think of all the things that we've done we shouldn't have done. All the things that we should have done that we didn't do. All the things that we said that we shouldn't have said. And all the things that went unsaid. Jesus says, repent for the kingdom of heaven is close at hand. So let's turn away from our sin and turn to Christ, confessing our sins in penitence and faith. And if you'd like to pray with me, Lord God, we have sinned against you. We have done evil in your sight. We are sorry and repent. Have mercy on us according to your love. Wash away our wrongdoing and cleanse us from our sin. Renew a right spirit within us and restore us to the joy of your salvation. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. So may the Father of all mercies cleanse us from our sins and restore us in his image to the praise and glory of his name. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. So blessed are you, Lord our God, creator and redeemer of all. To you be glory and praise forever. From the waters of chaos you drew forth the world, and in your great love fashioned us in your image. Now through the deep waters of death you have brought your people to new birth by raising your Son to life in triumph. May Christ, your light, ever dawn in our hearts as we offer you our sacrifice of thanks and praise. So blessed be God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. have wasted and the pleasures I have tasted that you were never in and I confess that though your love is in me it doesn't always win me when competing with my sin and I accepted the commandments I've rejected to pursue my selfish end. And I confess I need you to revive me, put selfishness behind me and take up my cross again. Jesus.
Jesus, I bow down on my knees, and I return to fall in love with Jesus, I bow down on my knees, and I repent. And now Claire will bring us the Gospel reading. This morning's reading is taken from Mark chapter 6, reading verses 30 to 34 and 53 to the end. The apostles gathered around Jesus and reported to him all they had done and taught. Then, because so many people were coming and going that they did not even have a chance to eat, he said to them, Come with me by yourselves to a quiet place and get some rest. So they went away by themselves in a boat to a solitary place. But many who saw them leaving recognised them and ran on foot from all the towns and got there ahead of them. When Jesus landed and saw a large crowd, he had compassion on them because they were like sheep without a shepherd. So he began teaching them many things. When they had crossed over, they landed at Gennesaret and anchored there. As soon as they got out of the boat, people recognised Jesus. They ran throughout the whole region and carried the sick on mats to wherever they heard he was. And wherever he went, into villages, towns or countryside, they placed the sick in the marketplaces. They begged him to let them touch even the edge of his cloak, and all who touched it were healed. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle reading is taken. Ephesians chapter 2, reading from verse 11 until the end. Jew and Gentile reconciled through Christ. Therefore, remember that formerly you who are Gentiles by birth and called uncircumcised by those who call themselves the circumcision, which is done in the body by human hands, remember that at that time you were separate from Christ, excluded from citizenship in Israel and foreigners to the covenants of the promise, without hope and without God in the world. But now in Christ Jesus you who once were far away have been brought near by the blood of Christ. For he himself is our peace, who has made the two groups one and has destroyed the barrier, the dividing wall of hostility, by setting aside in his flesh the law with its commands and regulations. His purpose was to create in himself one new humanity out of the two, thus making peace, and in one body to reconcile both of them to God through the cross by which he put to death their hostility. He came and preached peace to you who were far away and peace to those who were near. For through him we both have access to the Father by one Spirit. Consequently, you are no longer foreigners and strangers, but fellow citizens with God's people and also members of his household built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets with Christ Jesus himself as the chief cornerstone. In him the whole building is joined together and rises to become a holy temple in the Lord and in him you too are being built together to become a dwelling in which God lives by his Spirit. And this is the word of the Lord. 
Thanks be to God. Hello everyone. It's uh, really good to be able to talk to you. Uh, I'm sorry though that our vicar Teresa Taylor won't be speaking today. She would have been, but unfortunately she's been pinged by the um, NHS COVID app. Uh, she's quite healthy in herself, as far as we know, but she's got to stay indoors for a few days. So here I am. I'll start with an illustration, if I may. Every November, in the parish of Kingswood, a parish that I used to belong to, uh, at the War Memorial, among the wreaths that are laid for Remembrance Sunday, is one titled From the Wise Men of Kingswood. It's quite impressive that, though I've never seen any camels, so I guess it must be a different group of wise men. But I must say, a truly wise man, and here I'm going to uh, say a truly wise person because I'm including everyone in this, is someone who has personally come to Christ, met with him and offered him worship. By doing so, you become part of a big family. I heard on the local news of 59 members of one family and they're all living in the same street. I just hope they get on with each other. That's possibly hard to believe but they all know that they are part of one family. They all belong together and we as Christians know that we belong in God's family. Now Jane and I are proud members of the National Trust uh, for Scotland. I know we're living in England but years ago we wanted to visit the battle site at Culloden near Inverness and even with my special discount in celebration of finally having grown up even then it was still cheaper to join the National Trust for Scotland than to pay the admission fee. So then we had to get our money's worth by visiting as many National Trust properties in Scotland and in England and indeed of course in Wales as we could. The gardens surrounding these buildings often are quite beautiful. Jane likes the flowers and I, well, I admire the walls. Really old garden walls are made of so many quietly flaking colours and textures of brick and stone. They're quite beautiful. But of course walls are also built to divide those inside from the people outside. Again, in Kingswood Church, on the, the wall, there's a small portion of concrete in a frame, part of the notorious Berlin Wall, or so I've been assured anyway. But it's not these material walls of concrete and steel that actually divide people. They can be demolished as easily as the Berlin Wall, if there's a will to do so. I pray that the wall in Jerusalem, dividing Jew from Palestinian, and the so-called peace walls in Northern Ireland, will also soon be consigned to history. But our world is full of unseen walls. Walls that divide families, walls that separate communities, walls that divide our hearts from the healing 
and reconciling love of God. For the real walls are the ones we build within ourselves, brick by brick and stone by stone, as we harbour resentments and nurse grudges and prejudices. You may be part of a large family or a very small family. When we become one of God's children, we become part of an enormous family. And of course we have to start with getting to know God. Someone memorably said, Christianity is not so much a path to follow as a person to know. Christianity is not so much a path to follow as a person to know. And that person, of course, is God. And that's very true, obviously. I don't, I don't become a Christian by doing Christian things or by knowing Christian people. I become a Christian by getting to know God through Jesus. But being a Christian is being part of a great big rumbustious family. That's not always easy or comfortable for us. Other Christians may disagree with us on how we should worship, who should lead our worship, how we should behave, how we understand the Bible, but God intends us to live with each other, to love each other, and even to learn from our experiences. We live in an age, I believe, in which increasingly we have been, we have become alienated from each other. It feels as though there's no such thing as society. Only individuals who come together from time to time for their own benefit. And to keep us away from those people we, we don't want to relate to, well, we build wars. In our reading from Ephesians chapter 2, St Paul is thinking about a wall. This was the wall around the temple of Herod the Great in Jerusalem. It was built to keep anyone who was not a Jew firmly outside. It proudly proclaimed, we've got God and you can't have him. God, however, had other plans. His friendship is not just for any one group of people. It's for everyone. And when God's son Jesus died on the cross, St. Matthew caused another barrier, the curtain in the temple that divided off the place of God's special presence where only the high priest could go once a year. The curtain was torn in two from top to bottom. The ultimate sacrifice of the life of God himself broke down the wall of separation between God and all his people. Paul's message is simple. We cannot reach out to God in our own strength with any hope of finding him because we have all of us spent our lives building the walls of disobedience that keep us apart from him. Someone had to do something. And only God could restore his relationship with his creation. It was a costly reconciliation. But anything worthwhile usually is costly. It is through Christ, Paul writes, that all of us are able, if we wish, 
to come to God. And in exactly the same way, by sacrifice, we can break down those walls that divide us from other people. Only this time the sacrifice is ours to make. It won't involve us sacrificing our lives, just a little of what we want. Unless someone is prepared to make a sacrifice, there will never be a lasting peace. An old man was being interviewed on his 100th birthday and the interviewer asked him, as it seems they always do, what was the secret to his great age? The elderly man said, by never getting into arguments. But surely, the interviewer said, there must be some other reason, your diet or not smoking, or something. You can't have lived to a hundred just by not arguing. You know, the old man said, you could be right. In one of the best known passages in the Bible, Jesus said, blessed are the peacemakers. In being peacemakers, each of us has to start where we are. Not one of us is, as the poet said, an island. Each of us has family or friends, and we all brush against many others, and inevitably, inevitably we make a mark on them. It may be a ping on the NHS COVID app, as Unfortunately, Teresa found out. But whether that mark we make on other people is an emotional bruise or leaves them with a good feeling will depend on whether we've taken down those walls of misunderstanding which separate us from each other. No one is perfect. I'm certainly a mixture of good and bad, I know. Perhaps you are too. St Paul writes, Christ himself has brought us peace. Christ himself has brought us peace. It can only be in Christ with his help that we begin to relate more constructively with other people. Now there's nothing wrong with having close friends. Within the church we actively encourage house groups, places where you can get to know a few people really well and share your deepest feelings. Groups usually are good, but walls usually are bad. Groups that build walls around themselves, individuals that build emotional walls because they're afraid of being hurt or don't see the need that other people have or simply don't want to make an effort are simply not behaving in the way that God wants them to do. Fear and resentment and laziness and many other faults can cause us to put up fences. Only love can take those fences down. As we discover anew the love that God has for us, as we realise that Jesus' crucifixion, his death on the cross, was the ultimate sacrifice for us. So we come to accept that there can be no walls, no fences that divide us off from each other. May God help us to know more deeply the love he has for us and may his Holy Spirit enable us 
to love others so very much more. God bless you. Amen. Thank you, Claire, and thank you, Teresa. So let's affirm our faith together now in the words of the Apostles' Creed. And we'll say together, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body and the life everlasting. Amen. And now we come to a time for our intercessions and our prayers. Our response to the phrase, we will wait for the Lord, is our hope is in your word. Lord, your love urges us on. Give your church confidence to trust in your new creation. Bring to fulfilment the promises of your kingdom. As we think for a moment of where we have been placed as a part of the kingdom, in this specific church, in this specific city, in this specific part of the world. We give thanks for the church that we are a part of. And we pray that each one of us will seek your ways to, to know how we can be servants of yours in growing your kingdom in this place. We pray for our diocesan, our diocese at the moment, as they work through the, um, the planning and the negotiating and the seeking uh, your will for um, the new vision for the diocese. Um, transforming church and we just pray for that whole process we thank you for those who have already contributed um, into the um, information giving and we just pray that there will be a clear vision that will emerge in the coming weeks and when that vision emerges we pray that we here as a church may be able to align our vision with the diocesan vision of transforming church. We think of our brothers and sisters around the world. We think of all those worshipping you on this your day. Uh, however that worship is being worked out. We think of those perhaps who are just meeting around a tree that is church. And we think of those in the grandest of cathedrals and many, many parish churches around the world. And we just thank you that you have called us to be a part of your worldwide church. We will wait for the Lord. Our hope is in your word. Lord, your love sits in judgment over our deeds, whether good or evil. Search the hearts of all and inspire the course of justice and conquer, concord. We will trust in your name. And we do pray for our world leaders. 
And Lord, we pray that you will raise up leaders who have justice at their hearts. And as we continue to think of our world, we just think of all the many, many areas where there is so much unrest. Areas where there is war. Where are areas where there is significant corruption. And we do think of those who suffer as a result of that and who feel they have no voice. And we do thank you for all the humanitarian organisations that work so hard and so courageously to bring relief to those who suffer through no fault of their own. We will wait for the Lord. Our hope is in your word. Lord, your love grows within us as a seed germinates in the ground. Bring to full bloom the flowering of your grace. May we delight in the shade and protection of your favour. We will wait for the Lord. Our hope is in your word. Lord, your love holds us through all trials and tribulations. Look in compassion on all who cry for relief in their suffering. Grant that we may tell of your loving kindness all the day long. And in this moment, Lord, we do bring to you all those in need of special prayer at this time. We especially think of those perhaps known only to us, and we name them silently before you now. We also do pray for those who perhaps have no one else to pray for them in this moment of need. And we also remember those named on our new sheet. So many, Lord, to pray for, but all of these that we have named are known and loved by you. And we bring them into your presence now, Lord, and we ask for your healing touch upon them, that in your perfect timing and your perfect way, they may be restored to wholeness of body, mind and spirit. We will wait for the Lord. Our hope is in your word. Lord, your love raised Jesus from the dead for our salvation. As our old nature passes away, bring us into your new order. Remember us in your kingdom of mercy. And this, this moment we give thanks for the lives and examples of those who have gone before us. And we do also remember all those who mourn the loss of a loved one at this time, no matter how long ago that loss. And we ask that you will wrap your loving arms around them and that they may be comforted and sustained by you. We will wait for the Lord. Our hope is in your word. And we pray together, merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Now we pray the collect, the special prayer for the seventh Sunday after Trinity. Generous God, you give us gifts and make them grow. Though our faith is small as mustard seed, make it grow to your glory and the flourishing of your kingdom. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And gathering our prayers and praises into one, as our Saviour has taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. 
Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. So thank you for joining me in this uh, service this week. Again, don't forget, if you do watch it and you do enjoy it, please let us know. Even if you don't enjoy it, please let us know um, so we can plan for the future. So may the Lord bless us and preserve us from all evil and keep us in eternal life. Amen. And may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Amen. Please stay safe and we hope to see you soon. Thank you. Mm -hmm.